Good morning or good afternoon, whatever time it is that you might be joining us today for another episode of The Nonprofit Show. We are thrilled to have you here. Today we have with us Russ Howard, and Russ is the CEO founder at Card Funder, and he's going to talk to you about gift cards and this innovative fundraising solution for your nonprofit so excited to have this conversation. I've already had some dialogue with Russ, and um, I think we're already jiving in our innovation mindset. So excited for this conversation. Sorry to Julia. She's missing out today. And um, Julia Patrick, we do give you tons of thanks for setting up this platform. March of 2020 is when we started the nonprofit show. Julia serves as the CEO for the American Nonprofit Academy. And I'm Jarrett Ransom, Julia's personal nonprofit nerd, but really there's plenty to go around. Uh, nonprofit nerd, CEO of the Raven Group, and so honored to be here each and every day to have these high-level conversations with some really cool people. Hey, speaking of cool people, we wouldn't be where we are if it weren't for our amazing presenting sponsors. So I want to say thank you to our sponsors from Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy at National University, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Your Part-Time Controller, Staffing Boutique, as well as Nonprofit Nerd. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And please do check these companies out because they're here on your team, believe it or not. They want to help you elevate your mission um, and they are dedicated to that. Hey, they're also dedicated to us allowing these archive uh, conversations and episodes to be given to you free of charge. So you can find us on Roku, YouTube, Vimeo, Fire TV, and for those podcast listeners, cue us up as well, wherever you stream your podcast. You can listen to us literally any time of day, <laughs> day and night. So Russ, this conversation that we're having or about to have right now will be available in perpetuity to so many thousands, hundreds of thousands of people across the globe. But I want to welcome you by saying, you know, thank you so much for being here. For those of you watching and listening, again, this is Russ Howard, CEO and founder at Card Funder. The web address is cardfunder.com. Russ, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Jared. I'm a pleasure being here. I'm so thrilled to have this conversation with you. Um, and I'd love for you to start a little bit about what is Card Funder and how did you find yourself in the CEO founder seat? So this is a 30 minute show, right? Not it is. Okay. You have to consolidate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thanks again for having me on. And Card Funder is an innovative platform that allows uh, nonprofits, charities, churches, sports teams, anybody who's trying to raise money, uh, we provide uh, an innovative way to do that. Um, most people um, understand and, 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 inter and interact with gift cards. You know, it's, it's approaching a trillion dollar uh, global business now. Uh, domestically, you know, we're, we're, we're approaching $300 billion. And, you know, Gen Z and millennials are, are the real, you know, the real champions and real users of the platform. So, um, unfortunately, you know, it's a, it's a high growth industry, but it has a lot of breakage. So, it's estimated that there's about $40 billion worth of unspent gift cards on the sidelines. And that, that grows annually by three to five billion. So, the average consumer is sitting on $175 in unspent gift cards. So, you know, we saw that as a real, um, you know, a real challenge, you know, for the retail uh, industry out there. They don't really recognize that revenue till it's spent. So it sits on their liability sheets. Uh, so that breakage, you know, even, a, um, you know, holding up Starbucks card, there's a billion dollars of these unspent out there. So that's a real problem, right? That but, breaks but my heart, honestly. Oh. And I have to admit, we have them here in my house as well. But I think the culprit is my my preteen son. Yep, yep. Uh, Gen Z, uh, A, they're they're right there in the in the in the sweet spot. So I wasn't gonna, you know, get you going down a confessional, but you know, you just you did it. <laughs> I did. So, yeah. You know, so it, again, the average the average person is sitting on one hundred seventy five dollars worth, and Generally speaking, they're tucked in a drawer somewhere. They're not. They're not really in a wallet. Um, and they sit there and they sit there. And so, you know, my background uh, is, is specifically in, in retail. Um, and recently, most recently, uh, with with GameStop. And and really, you know, I was there at you know pre IPO 
we were trying to model out the business. We had three or four different models, and we really we really landed on the uh, secondary market and the ability for the consumer to trade in a game. You know, they spent fifty bucks for it, sitting on the sidelines collecting dust. You want to go buy a new game? Well, you know, take the game in and trade it. Acts like a coupon. So I really, really fell in love with that secondary space. It, it's you know, it's sustainable. It, it really speaks to you know what we're looking for in value. Um, so fast forward, you know, we saw an opportunity with gift cards, sort of the same, uh, similar characteristics. And we said, okay, there's got to be a way that we can we can unlock these cards and unlock the value of these cards. You know, and in doing so, uh, we we were very very pleased early on. You know, the results that we got uh, from from some of our early campaign campaigns and uh it was fun you know a lot of people came back and said hey i'm tired of selling something you know i'm tired of asking so now they're you're just picking up trash for people i'll, I'll take what you got there <laughs> not asking for any money and you know it's these have five ten twenty dollars fifty dollars on them so it's 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 meaningful it's micro donations that have a have a real macro impact you have already floored me, honestly. And by the way, I'll take that Starbucks one and probably yeah. the Home Depot as well, because I have plenty, plenty of projects. But let's talk about a little deeper into the gift cards in the American economy. Uh, you've touched on many statistics, which we love because we think data is sexy here. But tell us a little bit about, you know, the gift card impact, perhaps in the American con economy. Well, it's it's mainstream now, and you know I read something uh, recently um, that was uh, I think it was Blackhawk that did a, a, a survey about the holidays, and it talked about millennial and Gen Z specifically, and you know as in in a traditional sense where we grew up, at least you're a lot younger than I am, but you know cash was king, and you might have wrote, wrote check, and then you know as we, but there this holiday, millennials and Gen Z. You, uh, illustrated eight ways to buy something in the holidays. Gift cards were number one at 40, 43%. But, you know, buy now, pay later is, you know, yes. rising quickly. So now you have, you know, all of these illustrations about how you conduct uh, commerce. And, you know, as, as, as millennials are getting older, Gen Z's coming up, A's behind them, you know, they're the norm for them is not the not the traditional norm. So you use the term disruptive. I, I we want to be careful about that. I, I think we've been described as being disruptive, but mm -hmm. it it I think that we are highly innovative, but we're not really displacing anything that's that's currently right. out there. We really want to complement what's going on and we really want people to, you know, I mean there's 40 billion dollars sitting there and we're just trying to unlock that. And imagine what 40 billion could do for nonprofits. And I want to acknowledge the disruption and thank you for doing that. I think the word disruption gets a bad rap and, you know, it doesn't have to be for bad. Disruption can be for good. You know, the innovation for nonprofits, as you and I talked about, you know, so many nonprofits and we say there's 1.8 million registered in the U.S., they are craving or so they say innovation, but there are, I find I'll speak for myself often very late to adopt, right? And, and very much so this hurry up and wait mentality. We provide an innovative option. We provide innovative solutions and they say, we want it, we want it, but yet they're not taking action. So, you know, like that to me is interesting. We have $40 billion out there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gosh. And it's, and, and it's, you know, it's interesting you say that because as well-versed as we are in the gift card space and really consumers in general, you and I talked pre-show that, you know, uh, the nonprofit world's new, new to me specifically. And I think that the key learning so far is one, uh, is that sort of uh, everybody wants to innovate. You, you put it there in, in front of them and then there's a hesitation. Why is there a hesitation? One, it's these slow, slow cycles. Well, I'm already planned out 18 months from now. Okay, sure. uh, two, there's a trust factor, right? And so no one wants to go first. And, but yet you can't be an innovator if you're not willing to, you know, step out there, right? Mm -hmm. and, and we see this as a totally non-risk situation. There's, there's no investment. It's super easy to sign up. And, and all you're doing is going out there and, and collecting, you know, really what's on the sidelines. Yeah, absolutely. So if we're collecting what's on the sidelines, you at CardFunder, you literally help organizations convert these cards into cash. So 
what, like, what does that look like lately? And I'm curious if you could throw out some numbers of like how these transactions have really helped the nonprofit community. Sure, sure. So we started out in a physical world. Uh, so what we do is we enable um, the, uh, and we we become the the the, the platform uh, that that create that that provides this service, right? So if a church, for instance, where we tested, um, yeah. collects the cards. They put them in a box. They send them to us. We process those cards and send them back a check. So, so really, there's no there's no work on their side other than collecting the cards. So we still do that. We still offer that service in a physical form. Uh, and then you know we we rolled out an app. Uh, so then we onboard uh, a nonprofit into the app and give them their own campaign page. So then they can ingest a card. A, a you know a giver. A donor can give the card through the app, and then that goes directly to that campaign. But we're taking it in digital form, and then we also have uh, a URL feature that gives a splash page, campaign page, th the same way. So when the card is ingested, we know where it, you know, where it came from, who gave right. it, who, okay. the intended target, uh, where it's going, and then once we process those cards. Um, you know, monthly, the the uh, organization gets a reconciliation report, shows the card, shows the person, shows the value, shows the net results, and then we either ACH or, or, or send them a check, however they, they want. So I, I love that you mentioned, and, and we're not going to go there quite yet, is how do we get donors to participate? But mm -hmm. for your church and for your church example, I could totally see, you know, I grew up Southern Baptist sitting in yep. the pew pass the plate, right? And yep. in goes all of these, <laughs> um, you know, gift cards. It's like a dollar 25 here, 75 cents there. Um, I can visualize that collection of it. Well, the first time we did this, it, again, pre-COVID, right? Um, we, it, there was a, <laughs> it was the youth group. So it was, you know, there's your Gen Zs. There you know, they, have no, they don't have really a lot of discretionary dollars, but they really want to step in and help. So it was like magic because they took it on, youth group took it on and said, hey, we want to, we want to help this mission group. And they went out and, you know, a couple of people stepped up, sort of took charge. Um, they collect, collected the cards, dropped them in the basket. We processed those cards. And, and a week later, you know, they got a check for $7,000. Wow. So it was, a, it was a sort of a gasp, you know, when, when everybody in the, in the congregation heard that number, it was like, are you kidding me? Yeah. You know, really that, that much. And that's, that's really, you know, what sparked uh, this and what really uh, certainly got me to dedicate all my, uh, all my time to it. So, you know, as, as, as it exists, like in a one church, one school, mm -hmm. you, you get that impact, but, you know, as you go up the funnel, you know, we're seeing larger orgs like Compassion International, they put it on their homepage is another way to give. Yes. So it's, a, it's, you know, it sits there in perpetuity they're not necessarily running a campaign. It's right. just another way for someone to donate. Oh my gosh, this gets me so excited. There's so much opportunity, you know, really for this when it comes to that conversion of the gift cards into cash. And I, I'm still stuck on 40 billion because that was the number you shared, $40 yeah. billion. Imagine if we can just, I don't know, recoup 10%, you know, and, and drive that to charity. That would make such an impactful yeah. difference. Well, and that number grows by three to 5 billion a year. So it's, it's oh, not-, gosh. It's not it's not stagnant, you know, yeah. this is a, and if you, if we talk about, you know, disrupting anything, what we do want to disrupt is breakage, the waste. That's what we waste. really are trying to hammer home is to say there's so much waste out there and it's not healthy for anyone. Right. And, and the government's going to start getting more and more involved as soon as they see a billion dollars of Starbucks cards there, everyone's going to try to get their mitts on it. So oh, you know, yeah. our goal is to get it off the sidelines and, uh, and, and put it to good use. So how do we do that? What are the ideas that you share with the nonprofits you work with, Russ? What are these ideas to get the donors to participate? You shared, you know, having this youth group participate. You shared putting it on your website. Mm -hmm. What is working? How are you getting these nonprofits to not only go from raising their hands to say, hey, I want innovation to taking action to doing it? Yeah. Well, it's different at all levels. So, you know, if we're talking about a a youth baseball team that's trying to go to um, Cooperstown, you know, you've got, you know, 10, 12 kids there. Uh, they go collect cards and, you know, $1,500 is a huge deal for them. You know, that's, that's meaningful 
to buy uniforms or, or, or travel. So they, they'll knock doors. They just go door to door. Hey, this is what we're doing. Uh, Open that and, junk drawer, would you? Yeah, yeah. And, and the one thing that when we did, you know, the one thing that helped for trust, right, is that once we got, uh, every, we'll onboard everyone into the app. We treat okay. everyone the same, no matter if you're the 10th largest nonprofit in the world, like Compassion, or you're, you know, eight guys that are on a, on a soccer team. Everyone gets equal, uh, equal fare. So, but, but through the app, when they go and say they're trying to collect a card through a neighbor, they can pull up their campaign on the app and say, you can either give me the card physically, or if you'd like to, you can just donate it through this app. So that was really, you know, that was a game changer for us, you know, this, this, uh, fourth, third and fourth quarter. But, you know, as you, as you, as you go up the, as you go up the line, you know, we, we see, you know, a little larger groups, youth groups and churches, they may say, okay, somebody owns it, someone's really passionate about it, they've a real purpose, this is going to a very specific thing, you know, that's where people can really get behind it, um, and then you see a little competition here and there, it might be boys, girls, might be grade versus grade, you know, we see that yeah. with schools, where, oh, I bet. you know, this grade versus this grade, whoever collects the most cards, um, you know, gets pizza party, you know, some, we're working with one elementary school that's giving away a PlayStation 5, you know, they're thinking big, so Whoa. they're like, we want this to go viral. They're definitely talking to their audience. That's, that's right. Sure. We, we, you know, donate a card and that's, that's, you're getting an entry into winning a PS5. So they're, they're looking beyond their little community and saying, we want this to go nationwide. So that's, that's really clever. And I, you know, as an old retailer, you know, I think we, we really look hard uh, and, and, and watch carefully and we, we pull in what we're seeing is best practices and we, we repurpose and reshare those. Cause at the end of the day, we can sit here and, you know, articulate what we think are the, are the best methods, but, but, you know, boots on the ground, people that are really out there hurting or have a need or trying to do something really great. You know, they own the process We're we're the processor and, and we're just here to support them. So disruption is like just brewing inside of me right now, Russ. And I would be remiss. If I, I know <laughs> if I didn't mention the Amazon smile closure, right? Yeah. yeah so yeah. how are you seeing Card Funder step into that gap? Well, if you send me a list, an email list of, of all of those uh, million people, <laughs> then we certainly will reach out. <laughs> and Gosh, I'll tell you, I that's know. a challenge. We're we're on it. We're we're trying to figure that out. But you know, some messaging we put out there we've already seen uh people come into our platform and sign up yeah. that you know felt like uh we could stand in and fill a gap and i think we can Absolutely. um you know if if not all of it um some of it and hopefully more of it who knows but yeah. again you know going back to the eight ways um uh, millennials and, and gen z shopped and spent eight ways you got to think about you know it's hard to think about eight ways to buy something, yeah. but, you know, the same, same thing for, for giving, we see them, you know, we see, we see that group really embracing different alternative ways to, to give. And, um, and, you know, you and I spoke about it. We, we have to have the nonprofits open their eyes and say, this isn't your grandma tithing 10% anymore. That's what right. are you going to do? How are you going to engage and speak to that audience. And through this, it truly is a fun exercise. There's not a lot of friction here. You're, you're not, you're not investing in a product and having to resell it. Uh, you, you, it really is fun. And, and, and because it's so unknown, it, it's, it's, it's really um, meaningful when you, when you, you get through the end of the exercise and you say, wow, wow, I can't believe we just collected that much money. Look what we did. Look how many, look yeah. how many, you know, safe yeah. houses are, 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 you know, evenings for, right. for people we've provided. Look how many animals we've taken off the street. You know, like there's so, so much of an impact. I'm so curious and I'm sure our viewers and listeners are the same, Russ. What does the process look like? So we're interested. We heard today's episode and we're like, okay, my hand's up for innovation. I'm ready to take action. Okay. Okay. What's the next step? And, and walk us through uh, like the final product. Cause Fine. I can't wait Fine. to see. Yeah. Okay. To hear. Great. All right. So as an org would go to our website, uh, cardfunder.com. Uh, there's a little form fill there, which is just collecting your name and basic contact information to let us know, Hey, you're interested we will receive that form and then we send back 
if you would like to sign up, here's some of, here's some of the, the elements of what a campaign would look like or what your results would be. You complete the form fill on the website mm -hmm. and it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty easy. Um, you, what you're really doing is just your basic information. You're a 501c, so we need to know that. Uh, if you're going to participate in the app, you need to uh, have you need to be registered to Benevity. So that's right. you know Benevity. that's a uh, fact. Mm -hmm. You know that's a, uh, a that's what Apple requires. Uh, you give us your branding color. You give us your logo. You're uploading this. What do you want? What is this campaign about? In two sentences, what do you want to say as thank you when someone gives? In two sentences, and a little bit a little blurb. Uh, you're sharing blurb because if you use the app you can hit a button and share it out on social media. So what, what do you, what is your message? So once we get that, that information, uh, we onboard you in about 48 hours, we send you back a package that says, here's your URL sharing link. Here's your QR code sharing link. And here's what your donation page looks like. Go for it. And, um, you know, and we, we support you, you know, we'll, we'll help with press releases. You know, obviously we, you know, we come behind our orgs and, and do everything we can so, on social media to support them. Um, so that's it's pretty easy. Sounds like a win-win. Win. Yeah, it sounds like a win-win and, and there's nothing to lose in this. I, you know, I love it. And one of the things we have heard, you know, for the last three years and honestly, Russ, dating myself, I, I've heard this for the last 20 years being in the sector is our donors are dying, right? Our donors yeah, are right. aging and literally dying and moving, you know, so how do we get a new constituency base? How do we engage with a younger audience? How do we touch more people to give more money? And um, I believe in the power of, you know, not only recurring donors, but smaller donations make a really big impact. And so mm -hmm. I feel, and I've seen, you know, this too often that, too many times, and I've been guilty of it, just as well as I'm guilty of the gift cards that are, you know, stuck in a <laughs> junk drawer, um, of going for that major donor and not going for, you know, the multitude of donors that we could begin to engage. This sounds like an opportunity that just fits that like a glove. Yeah. I mean, if you're, you know, if, if you're a school, you're a, a church, you're a nonprofit, you know, you, you get to speak to, uh, you get to speak to this generation in terms that they understand mm -hmm. and you, you this is an introduction into giving right yes and it's a, it's a non friction easy way to say let's step in do this and then they get the spirit of giving they get the benefit of the, you know the great deed that they did and then they can see it see something change you know in a material way with something so simple Right. And so I think that's the beauty of what what we're doing. It's not so much narrow and deep. It's it's really it's really wide and shallow. But again, when you when you get people working together, um, it, it you know, it, it can it can really uh, provide some meaningful results. So with people working together, I'm curious, you know, I, I mentioned I have a 12 year old son. So his school does a lot of these dine out evenings. And I find that those are very successful mm -hmm. for places like faith based or schools, you know, education based. Are yeah. you kind of seeing that same audience for card funder is that the larger of the, you know, kind of uh, supporters, advocates, you know, because uh, his school is is K through 12. So there's a lot of kids, a lot of families to engage in something like Chipotle or something, you know, right, <laughs> are you right. seeing that is being the most successful as well for card funder? Yeah, I think that, you know, um, we're, we're seeing, you know, we're seeing, we're cutting across a lot of different, you know, sectors here, right? So we see with schools um, and, and, and they're, they're creative. Uh, you know, I think that one school that we're onboarding now is going to, instead of doing a, a, a penny war, they're going to do a card war. Oh, so, absolutely. You know, instead of dropping pennies in there, now you're dropping $10 bills in there. So they see it as, okay, wow, I, I already know how to do this. This is successful. So let me, let me take it in a different, different place. So I'm, I'm going to be fascinated on that one because we yeah. haven't seen that, that happen yet. Right. Yeah. So, but yeah, certainly, certainly schools, certainly sports teams. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, where we see the greatest results is someone has a passion for something they really want to make a difference that you that someone's championing it and really right. getting behind it and and they're setting a goal 
mm-hmm. you know, um, you know, one, one church that is having uh, a, a campaign in a few weeks said, okay, well, you know, they know exactly what they're, they're going to use the, the funds for. Right. And they, they're, they put a stake in the ground and said, we're going to collect 500 cards. That's it. We're not stopping until we get 500. We That's get- where you see the magic happen. Oh gosh. Okay. I have to ask about digital cards. How do the digital gift cards play a role in card funder? I'm sure there's a way to do that as well. Yeah. Yeah. So every card physical or digital has, you know, two sets of numbers, right? One is the card number and one is the pin. As long as you have those digits, when you, uh, when you're donating through our app or uh, online, you're just inputting those, those numbers. Uh, the, the the card number and the and the pen, and then we can detect the balance which is on the card. Because a lot of times people have no idea what's on the card, right? No. So so part of our process is we have to identify a balance, and once we identify the balance, then we can conduct the transaction. So okay, well you've thought of it all. I love these ideas to get our donors active to participate. I'm certainly going to bring this up to my uh, my own child's school to see what we could do uh, for them because, you know, whether it's athletics or arts, we're always looking, you know, to increase those dollars for support. So this sounds just, you know, like the, the perfect opportunity. Again, Russ Howard, it's been such a joy to talk to you. Little did I know we were going to have some Southern roots and connections as well that we we found out earlier. Um, But again, for our viewers and listeners, Russ Howard, CEO and founder at Card Funder. um, And the web address for that is cardfunder.com. Please check this out. And hey, if you are an organization that moves forward with Russ and Card Funder, let us know because I would love to have you back on the show. Talk to us about your process, how it's working, how it's being successful for your organization and the impact it's making. Because I mean, literally you've blown my mind, Russ. There's so much and it's almost like, why wasn't this thought of earlier? <laughs> You know, and that well, that will stump me again next year with some other innovative idea, I'm sure. That's right. That's right. So, well, thank you for being here, Russ. It's been such a pleasure. A, a nod to Julia Patrick for creating the opportunity for these conversations. And I'm Jarrett Ransom, your nonprofit nerd. Thank you again to our presenting sponsors that allow these mind-blowing conversations like the one that I just really enjoyed with Russ. So thank you to Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, nonprofit nerd, staffing boutique, fundraising academy at National University, and thanks also to Nonprofit Thought Leader. Please check these companies out. They are here to support you in your mission to do more good. And again, Russ, thank you for helping all of us do more good through Card Funder and uh, the Gift Card Exchange I'm just fascinated. I mean, I really am. Uh, there's not there's not much I think that has come by, and I'm like, oh, I haven't heard of this yet. But this is something that's really got my goat. So I'm excited to see where it goes. Thank you for having me on. It was a pleasure. <laughs> yeah, and for all of you that joined us today, thank you. I encourage you to share this episode with your board, your fundraising team, your fundraising committee. Let's see how we can recoup that forty billion dollars and not help it go up each year by two or three more uh, billion dollars because it needs to go to charity, not to the landfill. Um, But thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. As we end all of our episodes, we like to remind you to please stay well so you can do well. Thanks everyone. And thanks so much, Russ.